everyone, and welcome back to Ship of Fools. My name is Hannah McLean, and I am your dungeon master on this nautical adventure. Joining me is Andy Lakai. Uh, Finn Fisher. No, Lonnie. Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a great start already. <laughs> hey, guys, it's me, Reagan Starkweather. And Taylor Wallace. Malachi Kassir. And we are here. Um, so we'll do a quick recap and then we will dive in. This is episode seven. We right? are here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think At so. some point I'm going to have to stop saying the episode numbers because I'm going to get them wrong. <laughs> it won't <laughs> be true anymore. Um, it's a fun puzzle for the folks at yeah. home. Yeah. Um, well, just a fun puzzle for me, really. <laughs> we'll have a much easier time telling what episode numbers. Are you not a folk at home? Oh, this is true. If you I want, am. Hannah, I can start sending you my notes from each session. Honestly, helpful. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a quick recap. So, after defeating the blue robed cultists at the Blue Finn Tropical Resort, Finn, Reagan, and Malachi took their leave and headed for the city of Benswith, a sort of nautical truck stop, if you will, <laughs> a place where ships stop on their way to somewhere else. Um, and also a pretty big party city when you're there for just one night. It used to be a big eye party, but they got bought out. <laughs> a big what? Like Party City, the store. Was that really bought out by eye party? What's eye party? I, think so. I feel like all eye parties became party cities. What is eye party? It was a party store like Party City. Never and then they all it. became I party cities. I think you're making it up. Not to be confused I'm not. with Party Express. Party Express is something else. So is the Pony Express. Yeah, that's like a Chinese food restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> um, along the way to Benswith, uh, Reagan discovered some pronounced dragon scales on his back. Malachi heard a strange voice on the wind. And Finn received a friendly seagull who spoke with the voice of the Lurker of the Deep. The boys then did some errands, restocking on supplies, visiting the temple and the Nerean League embassy, and registering at a fighting pit, and are now heading to the home of Solaris, a wizarding friend of Nurgle, not the gull, Nurgle, but the wizard Nurgil, <laughs> uh, hoping to meet with Solaris and with Nurgle, uh, since Solaris supposedly knows everything there is to know about magical artifacts. So that's where you guys are going next, right? We're going there for dinner, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think that's the plan. <laughs> Great. Um, so late orders. Also, question though: Do I have a way of telling the time, or, or are you going to tell me the time? Um, this is probably going to be a city where there there will be bells ringing. So cool. I'll say that the bells ring on every hour, and you'll take note of that. I can hear the bells. It's six bong already. We've got to get to dinner. Is there like a quarter hour warning bell? Yeah, I'd say it, let's probably. Yeah, I'll say that the six the six bongs just went off. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sugar high. <laughs> um, and you guys, uh, the the six the the six bell chime. I won't say bong. Um, it's just <laughs> is just fading away as you guys. Um, you had to sort of. Uh, wind your way through the city streets a little bit before you found what you were looking for. Um, but you recall that Nurgle said that Solaris's place was across from a bar called the Crimson Call. Um, and you're able to find that bar. People are, can kind of point you in the direction. Um, sort of near the outskirts of the city, the Crimson Call is a kind of a small, looks kind of shadowy and dark bar. And then right across the street from the Crimson Call, there is a a very beautiful house, much kind of nicer than a lot of the houses that are in Benswith. Very kind of beautiful paint job, um, just generally like all in yellows and blues. Um, so which also makes it stand out, especially right across from this dark bar. It's very uh, brightly colored and the door is closed, but you are standing here in front of this house and over the door or kind of not, I wouldn't say over the door, kind of next to the door, there's like a nameplate. Um, that just says Solaris. There's no last name or anything. Mm. I knock with my mage hand. <laughs> you knock uh, with your mage hand. There's a pause. Um, the door is pushed open, and you see Nurgel uh, standing there, and he kind of pokes his head out, and he goes, Oh, Finn. What the hell is Nurgel's voice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was like, he, he was sounds like Nigel Thornberry, is what he sounds like. Huh, okay. I don't think that's accurate. <laughs> no, it is. I I never watched the Thornberries, so I don't know if that's the voice that I was doing. 
I only slightly watched it, but I'm 100% positive that's how he sounds. He goes, uh, Finn, uh, why don't you c- come, come on, come in here, you and all, oh, Reagan Malachi. I was just about to head out, so it's good that you kind of caught me before I headed, before I started out. Uh, come in, come in, I'll introduce you to my friend. He just turned into hey. Bartok from Anastasia for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I slipped a little bit. You remember Nergal, of course. Uh, Nerto goes, he kind of sighs, and he goes, Yes, I am. Um, I remember Nurgle, the honor of having a terrifying bird named after me. And Nurgle goes, and <laughs> flaps his... Seagulls are pretty big, and you kind of have to, like, <laughs> as you're going through the door, um, sort of... Yeah, I have sore. I have a sore shoulder yeah. from carrying him around all day. Yeah, you definitely do. Um, Reagan casts a longing look at the bar across the street, but goes in anyways. Yeah, Malachi goes in as well. Okay. So the three of you step into a a very cozy room. Definitely looks, um, it's not quite as brightly colored as the exterior, but there are several torches burning around as the sun is sort of starting to set outside and it's beginning to get a little bit darker. You see that uh, you find yourself in, in basically a, a sitting room. Um, there's some big kind of comfortable armchairs. There's books that line the walls. Um, there are, like, papers and diagrams sort of spread out. There's a number of interesting-looking magical items, uh, kind of scattered throughout the room. You see there's, like, a, like, a little bird in a bird cage that's kind of, like, looks like it's either magically animated or some sort of illusion. You can't quite tell, but you can see by looking at it that there's something kind of off about it. There's, like, a book that's just kind of floating in the air. And sitting in one of the large armchairs with a glass of wine in one hand is a man in dark golden robes that are kind of trimmed with this silver thread. Um, He has uh, sort of bronze skin, very beautiful features, just like a very kind of elegant looking man. It's okay, you can say Dev Patel. (laughs) <laughs> uh, a little bit, honestly. No beard, clean shaven. Um, but similar that you think think of think that with the hair. Um, and kind of is he old? He is. Uh, a, he's around. He looks to be like maybe a little bit younger than Nergal, so older than you guys, kind of forties or fifties, something like that. And he looks up curiously as the three of you enter, and he takes a sip of his wine, and he says. Friend, these are the uh, people you mentioned. I trust, Nergal? People and Seagull. And Seagull. He, uh, Nergal, you didn't tell me that they were bringing a Seagull with them. And Nergal goes, frankly, I uh, kind of hoped that somehow it would get lost, but uh, I think it's his familiar, maybe. That's incredibly rude. Actually, we just met. <laughs> um, and Solaris, who you assume this man to be, stands up and he walks over to you, Finn, and he kind of holds out his hand toward Nurgle. Um, and Nurgle sort of goes, ah, ah, and then kind of pecks his face forward and kind of nips at the tip of Solaris's finger. And Solaris very quickly withdraws and he says, oh, goodness, all right. Um, this is very uh, polite of when you're a guest in someone's home, but uh, I think that fine. means he likes you. Probably. I'm not totally sure, because like I said, we just met. I'd but. expect that's, uh, yeah, well, I know how it can be with familiars. He just, he reaches out his hand and he says, would any of you like some wine? Wine? Sure. Wine? Reagan kind of kind of looks at him and goes, is it magic? It's ordinary wine that I'm going to magically pour. He uh, waves his hand and you see the a bottle of wine kind of float off one of the tables and start, uh, it uncorks itself and starts pouring into a couple of glasses. Badass. Reagan mutters something derogatory under his breath and drinks it anyways. <laughs> Can I have a glass of water, please? Nurgle goes, um... Yep, I'll, uh, I can grab that for you. And he, he goes off into another room, grabs a, comes back with a glass of water. And Solaris goes, um, you're lucky that we have. Fresh water is oddly hard to come by in Benswith. Everyone just sort of drinks ale all the time. Um, well, if you need any, I can, uh, hook you up. Malachi <laughs> looks worriedly at Reagan. <laughs> Reagan's just like, yeah, I know. That's why I come here all the time. So you guys are all um, giving your drinks. Um, it's kind of awkward. There aren't enough 
there aren't quite enough chairs for everyone, mm. so Solaris is kind of left just awkwardly standing. Actually, no, Solaris Solaris will sweep back over to the chair that he was sitting down in and sit down. Uh, Nurgil is left sort of awkwardly standing at the edge. I was gonna say Malachi is probably still standing. Reagan does not sit. <laughs> Finn takes one sip of wine and then grimaces and hands it to Reagan. <laughs> I, I take it from Finn before it gets to Reagan's hands, and I say, Finn, he has a fight tonight. I say, yeah, I need it, and I take and it And I dump the wine into a Gotta plant. Gotta get the blood up. This is all happening so to Voce, <laughs> but also not. <laughs> We're just whispering furiously at each other. Um, Solaris is watching it with this kind of interested gaze, um, and after her moment, he says, so, um... Nurgil was telling me a little bit about what's brought you, the three of you, to Ben's with. Yeah, it was a big boat. A, well, mm. a lot of sailors. Yeah. It's a ship, Finn. It's called a ship. A boat is a small one. What has he told you? He, uh, he told me that you've, that- No, you're the small one, Regan. Finn, the man is speaking. I put hands over both of their mouths. <laughs> it's all right. Finish, finish your conversation. Ha, <laughs> finish. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, now back to back to business. Um, Nurgle had told me that you that he found an artifact in the lair of an abolith, some sort of cube or box. I was he was telling me a bit about some of the magical properties. I'm saddened that I can't see it for myself, but uh, it sounds like a very interesting object. And Nurgle said he thought you might still know of um that you seems to know more about it than he did um wait i forget did we ever tell nurgle that we found it you didn't tell nurgle that you okay. found it um so but so he there he was a little bit it? in that in that conversation there were a couple of little awkward okay. moments of, of discussion of the cube but nothing was ever outwardly said nurgle never learns that you had it okay well we know who does have it? Interesting. What we were wondering is what it might be. And building off of that, who would want it? Solaris nods thoughtfully and he um, he stands up, he sets the wine down and he goes over and grabs a couple of books off the bookshelf. And while he's grabbing them, he says, Nurgle, remind me, tell me everything that you knew about it. And Nurgle goes, well, uh, so... Right, I find it in the Abolith's lair, and it was just kind of sitting there on top of a pedestal, um, underwater, but not floating or anything, just there under the water. Um, it was about this big, and he gives, he kind of motions with his hands how big it is. I had a little ridge on one side, like you could maybe stick something very small in it. Um, and when you cast spells on it, was what I noticed right away. When you cast spells on it, weird things would happen. Kind of seemed like the, the bigger the spell, the weirder the thing, you know? So just a little bit of a cantrip didn't really do much, just some sparks or some weird uh, effects. But when I tried to cast the Identify spell on it, for instance, um, you know, there was a... Well, my hair turned blue for about a minute, um... Hey, I had a punk phase too. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we should unpack that, but okay. Um, Solaris wouldn't ask about it. Solaris says, um, now that's that's interesting. So casting magic on it caused it to do some sort of, caused it to backfire on you, basically. And Nurgle goes, yeah, well, I sort of, um, uh, it didn't really, it, it wasn't a huge deal. Like I said, my hair just turned blue. But in addition, the Identify spell didn't work. It just didn't function the way that it's supposed to. Um, and uh, the same thing was true when I tried to cast Detect Magic directly on it. I got I got a weird effect, but nothing, you know. Hmm. I, I didn't detect any magic. But I mean, I assumed that there was... I detected magic with my brain uh, based on the behavior of the cube. <laughs> when Solaris goes, hmm, yes, I completely understand what you mean. <laughs> Finn is like, wow, that must be some really advanced stuff. Um, should we, like, tell him we had it? <laughs> hmm. What kind of vibe is Solaris putting out? Like, do I, do I trust this man? Yeah, is he, like... Hey, make an insight check. Uh, nine. He seems really cool. Um, he's definitely... <laughs> oh, nice! He's definitely, uh, presents an air of intelligence. Um, you can tell that this is someone who's very smart, 
Um, he also projects kind of an air of competence. He's definitely like seems to be completely in control of the situation as it is. May I make an insight check as the more suspicious one of the party? Go ahead. Uh, that would be a 22. A 22? Yes. <sighs> Let me see. With a 22. Solaris seems very interested in this. Not necessarily in a, like, he all, he knows more than he's saying way, but more in a, like, a calculating, and I would even use the word conniving way. Mm. Um, you can tell Malachi just from, from sizing this guy up that he is already running through, like, how can I get my hands on this object? When you guys said you knew who had it, he definitely like sat up a little straighter and became a little more engaged in the conversation. Mm, okay. So yeah, I'm not going to tell him who has it or that we ever had it, probably. Okay, good to know. I would like to look for small, shiny objects in the vicinity that I could pocket. Sure, go ahead and make an investigation check. Oh, that's a nine. <laughs> a nine? There's a really beautiful quill pen. There's also like a very nice paperweight. That's I don't I don't know how to write. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's um a few kind there are no like gems or anything like that and none of the magical artifacts that he has around are small enough to kind of quickly swipe, but there are some very just kind of like elegantly made like um little boxes and little um there's probably like a small glass orb. I'm just I'm just going to start poking stuff. Okay. Not for Just any reason. In specific. front of him. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think this guy's cool and smart and I trust him. Okay, Finn. Um, let your dads talk. Uh... <laughs> I, lo- I look towards Nurgle expecting to hear the lurker's voice. <laughs> Nurgle goes, ah. I don't even know why I said dad's plural. Regan is also. Regan's like looking at an orb like he thinks he's going to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh God, I'm only 26. <laughs> How did this happen to me? <laughs> um, Malachi says that last is a, a Shakespearean aside. Um, <laughs> okay, so the last time that we saw this item, it was being pursued by what we assume were cultists in blue robes who seem to have some sort of storm magic. Would you know anything about that? Yes, uh, Nurgle was telling me about that, and I that that I know about the the object a little less so, but the cult. Yes, um, they're called the Maelstrom Cult, uh, a sort of um, extreme sect of the worshippers of Cord, the Storm Father. Um, <laughs> sect. Sect C T at the end there. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say extreme sex cult. <laughs> and I was like, uh, this not, is not the are... direction I thought we were going. Taylor, this is a Christian podcast. Some of the least horny cultists you'll meet. Uh, <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> that's the uh, that's this episode's tagline. <laughs> they're just all about the all about the storm. Um, yeah, so they're usually um, this is an interesting thing for them to get involved with. Um, so Lars is kind of all of the stuff he's saying, he's saying as he's like flipping through these big ancient tomes and he points over at one book that's already lying open on the table. Like he and Nurgle had already been discussing this, which is a book of kind of like, it's basically about the storm father about Cord, And it's got lots of different um, stuff in it about his worshipers and like what they believe and what they are. And you see that there's a, it's it's open, if any of you go over and look, um, it's open to a page about a particular cult called the Maelstrom cult, which basically believes that there should just be more storms and the storms should be more destructive. Um, <laughs> and just kind of that, like, <laughs> storms destroying things is good. <laughs> All right, so they make some interesting points. Uh, I'm willing to hear them out. And uh, Solaris says... This seems interesting. Usually they're just all about, you know, chaos for chaos's sake. Mm. Using it as a targeted way to attack a particular location seems out of character. What if they knew that the item was in that location? That's Then that's very interesting. Uh, he, he, like, whips his head around and, like, points at you, Malachi, and he says, then that's very interesting because I, I wouldn't think that the... That a cult like that would be after an object like this. It makes me wonder what, what this thing is that we're looking at. Did, 
None of you ever saw the object, right? Oh, no, I saw it. I saw it when Nergil here threw it into the ocean. Oh, right. Um, and you, but you didn't get a very good look at it or anything. I saw that it was like a, a, a cube. Go ahead and make a deception check for me. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> through the cloth, which was wrapped around a cube-like object. <laughs> uh, net 20, uh, plus... Uh, okay. three, so 23. 23 Damn, on Damn, which 20. set of dice are you using right this, now? This dice, which I've been using for, like, magic-y things, is killing it right now. This die, I'm sorry, this die. Is this a magic-y thing? <laughs> Lying is magic. Deception about a magic-y thing. Sure, I believe it. It's for sketchy stuff, and I consider magic to be sketchy. <laughs> Damn right. It's a shadowy <laughs> die. All these arcanophobes in this, uh, party. <laughs> um, Why do you think I'm playing a tank? I was like, look, guys, it's gonna be a world where it's an ocean full of magic, <laughs> and you all went, mmm, magic seems sketchy. <laughs> Literally everyone in the party Finn, uses Finn magic, but go at- off. <laughs> Finn is poking at the magic bird with his mage hand. He loves it. <laughs> the magic bird is your your mage hand. Funnily enough, your your mage hand can interact with the bird, but if you like go over and poke it with your real hand, you notice that like your real hand goes through the bird, but the mage hand can interact with it. Um, Somewhere out there is a wizard whose hand looks like a bird. <laughs> Okay, go on. <laughs> I forget what Solaris was about to say. Um, oh, yeah, you just, you successfully deceived him. <laughs> he goes, um, hmm, uh, disappointing, all right. I was hoping that perhaps you'd seen it close to, I mean, you saw it less close than Nergil saw it. This isn't any more helpful. And Nergil kind of crosses his arms a little sullenly and goes, sorry, I didn't managed to investigate it more while I was running for my life. And Solaris goes, He was a fish. Solaris goes, please, you were fine. You didn't die, did you? And Nerdle goes, Are they married? Could have died. (laughs) (laughs) You can make an insight check. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I will. Thanks. I'm going to use that sketchy die again. Are they married? Nat 20. Holy shit. (laughs) This It's rigged. This is insane. Um, with a with a nat twenty, you. Clock, I'm not kidding. You clock. I know you're not kidding. You clock exactly that they used to date about fifteen years ago and have since broken up. Um, and it wasn't like it was one of those like mostly amiable breakups, but like things are still sometimes there's like a little bit of tension there. Oh God! I oh knew Solaris God. was gay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, okay. Hold. Hold on. Reagan like stops poking magical objects with an air of distrust and now turns around and regards the rest of the room with an air of distrust. He's like, What were you I may be stupid, but what were you running for your life from? The cult The Abolith? I thought you said it was gone. No, no, the Abolith's gone. The cultists, remember, they attacked me. That was how I knew The ones who they attacked who shipwrecked us. Yes. They attacked me right after I got the object, but there were only a few of them, so I was able to kill them and then i got on the ship and but i was still a little bit nervous that something was coming after me and that i was right and they came after me full force and sunk the whole ship Mm. so why didn't you tell anybody else or warn anybody that you were you know carrying dangerous cargo that a bunch of blue meanies were gonna come after you for well what would i i was a little afraid that the captain would be like well all right i'll drop you on this desert island then and you can fend for yourself Mm-hmm. This desert spa island. Yeah, what a pity well, that would have been. They'd have dropped me there. Regan goes back to poking things. Uh, Mr. Solaris, sir. Yes? I don't know. Why do they call him sir? I don't respect this man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Malachi says that out loud. <laughs> um, I'm polite, okay? Sue me. <laughs> that, that was Taylor, not Malachi. That cannot be his new catchphrase. <laughs> 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 um... <laughs> So, despite only having this limited information about the cube's appearance and the fact that they were after it despite being, like, chaos worshippers of some sort, is can you give us anything more to go on here? About the cube? I... I don't know. Um, he's paging... What would it take for you to know? Well, it would be nice if I could see it again. You mentioned knowing who had it, so... Mm. He's like, he's, he's stopped, he's got the book still open in his hand, but he's looking right at you, Malachi. 
Malachi, I think he wants a bribe. Mm. Reagan kind of like turns to Finn after Finn says that, and Reagan kind of looks at <sighs> Finn and then looks at Mal and is like, we could get it for you for a price. You could get it for me and just give it to me? No, we don't even know if we can find it. But if you can find it. We know who took it from where it last was. We don't know if they still have it. He looks past Malachi at Reagan and goes 100 golds. 150. Where? No, 100 golds for you if you get me the cube. We're not selling you Finn, okay? He's not part of this equation. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe was not asking that. But I will throw what? him in as what? a free bonus enough? gift. You wouldn't pay that much for me? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you could be like the loyalty bonus or something. Mm. Anyways, 150. He, uh, he says, <clears throat> 100 gold if you get it for me, 150 gold if you can get it for me, and also tell me who it is who had it, and why they had it, and where they got it from. I mean, they got it from Nurgel. What? Nurgel threw it overboard, and- So the ocean? So the- I don't know what sort of answer you want here. Was it one of the resort guests? Who, who? 125. 125 if you bring me the cube. Why would you? Oh, I thought you would just reduce the price. For <laughs> <laughs> it's called a haggling, Finn. Mm. I'll do 125 if you bring me the cube. See? I'll do 120. Here's the uh, thing. If you, just, you bring me the cube, then you get 120 just for yourself, but it can't be <laughs> a group effort. Okay, here's the thing. We go to the trouble to get this cube, even with you paying us. What's the incentive to hand it over to you? You don't even know what to do with it. You don't know what it is. I add it to my collection, and I study it, and I run tests on it as best I can without my magic, which will be a fun challenge, honestly. Without your magic? Well, without my magic, because the cube, you can't cast spells directly on it, so I'll have to mm. do some, hmm, maybe some roundabout sort of, if I cast a spell on something around it, I can see how it reacts. He's mm. sort of, like, processing and his gaze becomes a little far away, and then he sort of snaps back, and he's like, so will you get it for me? Do you have a resume? <laughs> do I have a what? I do! A resume? What are your credentials? My credentials? Yes, your credentials. Uh, you see his eyes kind of glow very brightly for a second. <laughs> in, like, an excited way or, like, in a magic way? Like, in a magic way. Oh, God. Uh-oh. <laughs> Reagan goes into fight stance. So you see his eyes start to glow and he says, what are my credentials? And all of a sudden the, the light starts to... Fl- that is the question, yes. The light starts to flare out from him um, and you all take five radiant damage and so so does Nurgle as there's this kind of explosion Ugh. of bright uh- searing light um, emanating Excuse from me. Solaris and then just as quickly going away. Uh... <laughs> Question, can God protect me from this? No. <laughs> Aw, that's some bullshit. Hang on, I'm doing math. Ow. Can you teach me to do that? Malachi takes it and doesn't even flinch. Um. Uh, you're going to have to be about to hold Reagan back, so get ready. Reagan's going to start swinging. I'm going to make an attack roll. <laughs> really? Are you? Malachi, Malachi dead arms Reagan. <laughs> like the mom arm, if we got into a car crash, that's what he does to Reagan. Uh huh. And he says, oh, it's "Fine, because it was a nine anyway." <laughs> okay, so I fully clothes pin Reagan then. Um, <laughs> clothes line. Clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Reagan's like a kitten. If you pinch the back of his neck, he goes limp. <laughs> <laughs> I I did mean clothes line. <laughs> yes. Uh, um. But <laughs> Finn throws a clothes pin at Reagan. Okay, I'm like. So you're gonna, you're just gonna, like, hurt the cube? I don't understand what that was supposed to show me. Solaris kind of lets out a long sigh, and then he laughs a little. And he says, look, that's the deal. If you, if you want the gold, bring me the cube. If you don't want the gold, don't bring, you're under no obligation. I just want to study it. I'm not going to, uh, beg you to give it to me. I have other ways of getting things that I want. And I don't even want it that much. It's just a, an interesting artifact, all right? You're not gonna beg? Beg, no. daddy. <laughs> um, Malachi did not say that. <laughs> um, okay, so so you're just offering us gold? We 
I mean, I'll be honest, we're sort of interested in information here as well. Sure. I'm interested in gold, too. Information of, oh, uh, as in what I find out about the cube you want me to share with you? Um, yes, it got a shipwrecked. Absolutely, of course. I'd be more than happy to tell you anything I discover. Everything you discover. Anything I discover. I, I can't make any promises. I don't know what I'd find, but... Well, I would not want to be having you keep anything from us, given the trouble we're currently going through to try and procure this item for you. It's less about keeping things from you and more about you having realistic expectations. And abolists are bizarre creatures from other planes and from ancient histories. The, um, what I'm able to discern may not live up to your expectations of what an arch wizard can do, and in any case, what, a uh, what I find may not even make sense to our, uh, you know, mortal minds. I mean, that I understand, but I would want to know... <laughs> Maybe not to yours. Everything Maybe to his. that you find out. I, I will share with you the information that I discover about the cube, mm. and I will give you 125 gold if you bring it to me. Okay. So, also, why should we trust you? Again... You trust the gold or you don't trust the gold. I'm, I'm okay. in it for information. I think he's cool and smart and I trust him. This guy gets it. I trust the gold. Okay. No, I whispered that. He didn't... <laughs> he's got very sharp ears. Let's get out of here before this beautiful, beautiful man tries to microwave us again. Why would I try to microwave you? Mm. Oh, Finn, okay. you're, so, you're Wait, such did a we... good thing to get cute. Are we being served dinner at any point or has it just been wine? <laughs> it's just been wine. <laughs> Excellent. No. Should we make con saves or what? <laughs> Um, well, you're the only one who's drinking, and you haven't had <laughs> that much yet. Okay, um, Malachi takes a seat and sort of, like, cocks his head at Solaris a little bit and says, All right, you've given us something to think about. We're chasing a lead down this evening. We'll let you know what we found out. All right, I hope it'll be a pleasure doing business with all three of you. I nod and then, like, look expectantly at the table. <laughs> Do you want to keep... Would you like some wine? <laughs> what are you doing with your teeth? <laughs> Charcuterie or no deal? Oh, uh, yes. He sort of... Uh, Nergil told us you would feed us. We're kind of hungry. <laughs> Nergil goes like, I don't know if I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Malachi turns into a negotiator when he's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> This is objectively true. <laughs> Obje <laughs> aggressive negotiations. Solaris kind of sighs and says, "All right, Tom, I'll see what I can what I can whip up." Um, and he sort of he and Nergel kind of he actually he he steps back into the back room and kind of leaves Nergel to keep an eye on you guys. And Nergel sort of crosses his arms and goes, "Did I?" Did I really say there'd be food? I don't remember that. I don't know. I'd have to go back and listen to the last episode. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I would It was more like three episodes ago. Two episodes ago. <laughs> I don't remember this conversation in the slightest. Um, I think we just said we were going to Norgel's for dinner, and then we just sort of assumed... <laughs> we don't know if Norgel knew that. <laughs> Anyways. Norgel just kind of goes, all right, if I said it, I said it. I'm a... Well, I'm not really a man of my word, but, you know... <laughs> I like the honesty, and Reagan just grabs the bottle of wine. Um, so after a little bit, Solaris comes back with, like, basically, it's, he, like, whipped up the contents of his pantry, but, like, he's a pretty <laughs> rich man, so it's, like, really nice stuff. Roast duck and yeah, yeah, homemade kind of really, really, applesauce. It's just leftovers and, like, the last few crackers in a sleeve of crackers, but it's, like, very nice, expensive <laughs> crackers. Ritz crackers? Um, more like ritzy crackers, am I right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, uh, Solaris comes back and you guys, you guys put together, um, you, you're fed, and it's sort of temper some of the wine that Reagan's been drinking. I give Nurgle a cracker. Nurgle, like, eats it in that way that birds do where they, like, tip their heads back and it's like... <laughs> 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 um, oh, I hope Nurgle lives forever. <laughs> <laughs> He's already, like, hundreds of years old, right? We all die yeah. at the end of this show. Oh, just, to, just, to, just so you know, we all die. It's just Nurgle. <laughs> yeah. The Adventures of Nurgle. Um, 
Yeah, and you guys eat dinner. Um, the conversation is significantly less tense, uh, but there's still a little bit they want to hear about. They're actually very interested in Finn's magic capabilities, and Nurgle's kind of telling Solaris about some of the things Finn can do, and Solaris is very much kind of like, oh, so you like, you've made some sort of deal with something, right? I've, I've heard about people who do things like this. There's quite a few of them around. Oh, you've heard of warlocks. Well, yeah, exactly, yes. Warlocks, <laughs> as one would call them. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't make a deal so much. It's just like, my dad gives me magic. See, but that sounds more like a sorcerer, right? And Nurgle goes, that's what I said, but it's not the way that it seems to be reacting. Reagan chokes on whatever he's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Malachi tries to do the Heimlich on him. <laughs> it's just it's just a warm hug. I guess I guess you could consider the father son bond a sort of deal in a sense. Solaris and Nurgle kind of look at each other, and Solaris nods, and it's like, in a sense, I I suppose a a bargain of filial affection, right? Wherein you give love and receive power to cast Eldritch Blast, yes. Oh, all Finn yeah. wants is to receive love instead of power. Oh, my God. <laughs> I call that being a sugar baby. I was once a baby. <laughs> um, and so you guys uh, discuss the mechanics of warlocks and various other things over dinner. And then Solaris, uh, Nurgle kind of uh, goes back to putting on his robes, basically, and his, um, you know, like his jacket and his... Backpack, and I'm trying to think of the fantasy words for these things, but you know, his rucksack, his gear, his gear yeah, his, yeah, his rucksack. Nurgle gets the strap. <laughs> no, um, and then he, um, he's like, "Well, I was um, planning to be leaving, and uh, I'll, uh, I guess I'll see the three of you around." Are, are you staying in Benswith? Yes, I'm I'm staying for one night, but then I'm getting out of here first thing tomorrow morning, the first ship out. You don't want to find out if we find out about the cube? I don't really... I don't know. Sometimes you get to... Uh, Solaris will let me know if it's anything super interesting. What's your forwarding address, Nurgle? <laughs> My forwarding address? Well, um, I suppose if you need to reach me, you can get in touch with, um... Uh, Get in touch with Zuriel Academy. They'll uh, they'll be able to. They'll know where I'm located. Farewell. I give him a hug. <laughs> he he reciprocates the hug. How how many bong is it? Uh, it is. Let's see. With all the talking and stuff like that, it's probably seven bong. Was like a little bit ago. Okay. So it's maybe seven fifteen, seven thirty. Seven bong. <laughs> <laughs> Is Nurgil, is Nurgil still here or is he gone? Nurgil is leaving. Uh, he leaves and kind of shuts the door in an awkward wave and he sort of awkwardly like gives a little salute to Nurgle. Um, there goes the bravest man I've ever known. There goes Solaris my hero. <laughs> Remember okay. how I said musical episode? It's now. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's, sev- it's seven bomb? It's just past seven it's like bomb. seven and oh a half Oh my God. Bomb. We still yeah, have so much time bomb. to kill. We could go to the bar. <laughs> yeah, it bar seems, seems like the, the time street. to do our mission. <laughs> okay. Not your prosciutto. Um, before we go though, I I don't uh, I don't trust this guy, but I want to pull Solaris aside just for a quick sec. Uh huh. You sort of Reagan and Finn kind of go outside and are waiting in the street outside for you, and you pull Solaris aside, and he says, "Yes." So when you were talking before about you know having some sort of patron or figure who grants you magic. Oh, yes. Is, is that how you do your magic? Uh, no. I uh, spent many, many, many years reading books and studying and remembering the arcane runes and mm. writing them down in my spell book. And okay. Yes, it does seem rather cheap that someone like young Master Finn can just sort of get magic <laughs> Young free, Master? <laughs> Outside, you see an Eldritch Blast just like fly by through the window <laughs> up into the sky. <laughs> You see Finn go flying by shortly <laughs> after. Yes, young Master Finn, indeed. Um, but you, you you do know about these sort of things. I would say I know a great deal. That's been my life's work. What about a situation where, hypothetically, um, someone, through no no pact or sort of patronage or anything like that, but just someone found that one time something happened and they could use some magic. 
There's a... And it seems to come from an external source. Okay, that's good. That was going to be my next question. Um, there's many different somethings that can awaken magic. If you're hit by a sort of magical uh, blast, it can awaken dormant sources of power that were always within you. Hmm. Um, you also can, after going through a traumatic event like that, find that there's magic that you uh, have. Hmm. What about uh, um, an event but like that? Like what you said, like um, tra- a traumatic event. Yes, but with no magic. Uh-huh. So there was a traumatic event. Hypothetically with no magic, speaking, and then something happened without hypothetically magic. Hypothetically speaking, someone had a traumatic event with no magic, and then and then then there was magic, and someone sometimes says things to them. Ah, now that's that's significant. In that case, you're looking at some sort of. Uh, extra planar being who is uh interfering with you oh not i mean Could it, be it's a, quite it's kind of i mean it hypothetically it would be kind of nice actually it's like not a mean interference it would not would not be a mean interference well you could have gotten yourself oh me no i didn't God, say me friend <laughs> um someone sorry could have gotten themselves the attention of a god Ta-da! <laughs> Okay, and if we supposed that someone might have sort of gotten that far on their own, how would one determine who this being might be? I'm sorry, the someone in this case is... The, 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 the being who has come into some sort of power, uh-huh. trying to determine who is granting them that power. And also, well, that's very interesting. Interfering in their lives, huh? That aren't mine. That is very interesting indeed. Well, I would say to that someone, I would suggest hitting the books, maybe a library, uh, some sort of uh, a more scholarly temple, perhaps something dedicated to Ayun, the uh, goddess of knowledge. Mm. She might be able to. I, uh, how do you spell her? Followers Ayun? tend to Ayun. I O U N. Mm. Ayun, the goddess of knowledge, some of her followers tend to stockpile this sort of religious literature. I would say a little bit of research and you might be able to figure out. Um, some of my, uh, you know, previous colleagues or people that I've known um, of the more faith and divine magic persuasion might suggest just quiet meditation and hoping the answer will come to you. But <laughs> I've never been much one for that school of thought. Malachi's like scribbling this all down on, I mean, I don't know, maybe just his hand. I don't know what he has to write on. (laughs) Oh, there was a nice quill kicking around. He has like a chalk slate on his arm. Yeah. (laughs) Um, thank you. It's not a problem. The the divine forces are, uh, can be cantankerous. I would tell this, you know, person in a hypothetical situation that... He pauses, and you can see he's sort of thinking through words carefully, and that there's a little bit of, um, this seems like a very fraught issue for him. And he he says, I would, I would caution your friend to be wary of voices that start speaking, even if they seem like they're kind ones. I look a little disturbed at that, and I nod and I leave. (laughs) Okay. Um, and the three of you are now standing in the street outside. It is, um, it's gotten pretty dark by this point. Um, you can hear carousing going on around you. Um, most shops and things like that are closing up for the night, um, and being replaced by just people being merry. Um, so the three of you, uh, exit to Lars's house and you head for the interesting weasel bar. I'll say you probably like can get a general sense of where it is. Because you, it's pretty central to Ben's width, so you probably walked past it at some point or another. The other reason that you guys are able to find the interesting weasel pretty easily is that it's very large. Um, it's like two stories. There's, it's like one of the biggest bars that you've walked by. Um, they have food. They have like a kind of little bit of a dance floor. They have a, just like a general, they have rooms. It's an inn and tavern. So there's like rooms upstairs and stuff. Um, it's just generally like a pretty, a pretty lively and thriving place. Um, and there's like a little carving, a wooden carving of a, of a weasel over the door. 
anymore with like he's got like little glasses at the end of his nose and he's like got he's like holding one <laughs> finger up like he's in the middle of saying something that's how you know he's interesting <laughs> Yep, sure is. Um, okay, so yeah, you guys find the interesting weasel bar and you head inside. Um, everybody go ahead and make me perception checks. Okay. Oh. That is a five. A 21. Seven. <laughs> okay, um, so... Uh, it's dark in here and I don't have dark vision. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit dark. You don't have dark vision, um... Finn, you're just distracted by, like, all of the activity and all of the, the stuff that's going on. Um, but, Reagan, you spot Nell uh, kind of off by the, standing off by the wall, like, with their arms crossed, um, looking, kind of looking a little bit nervous and looking around and clearly watching for you guys to come in. Um, and then once they see you guys come in, they sort of start making a, making their way over I am going to immediately duck and waffle and start skirting around like the wall. What is duck and waffle? It's when you duck and then you waffle. That's not a thing anyone's ever said before now. (laughs) (laughs) That is a new phrase. I dispute that. I don't think I coined that phrase. We'll we'll double check that. (laughs) We'll fact check that. (laughs) All right, so I get out onto the dance floor and I do like a roll and pancake. (laughs) (laughs) No, it has to be an animal in a breakfast food. (laughs) Anyway. Okay. (laughs) Jesus Christ. No, at, at any rate, I surreptitiously and intimidatingly get around behind them. Syrup for the waffles. Exactly. Oh my god. So that we end up like flanking them. Go ahead and make a make a stealth check. Uh, that's another twenty one. Another twenty one? Okay. You see that they're uh well I should call. Yeah, you see that they're kind of uh, focused on Malachi and Finn, um, and you manage to get the jump on them, which is not easy to do. And you can tell that that you, you sort of like they walk up to Malachi and they're like, "Hey guys, where's um, where's Reagan?" Right here, baby. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <sighs> Maybe don't do that. Um, the two of you see that like Nell absolutely went for a dagger that they've got like strapped to their forearm right there as Reagan came up behind them, but they sort of relax. And now um, know and where the daggers are. I say. Hey, I'm no. dan- I'm, I bump into Nell while I'm dancing, and I'm like, "Oh, hey, you're here!" <laughs> hey, yes. Hey, Nell. I'm glad you're Where's our cue? Yourself. What's up? Yeah, let's go talk upstairs, okay? And also, what do you mean your cue? Let's go talk upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, does anyone need a drink or um, anything? Food before we you go? buying? Mm. Sure. Then yes. It's an apology for breaking into your villa. I'll buy. Do they have ice cream here? Probably not. No. But they might have, like, chips and guac or something. <laughs> yeah, I could go for that. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's get some chips and guac. I'd like a single malt whiskey. That's the whiskey. next best thing. Yeah. Beer and a shot. Great, so you I guys like grab... a nice glass of single malt whiskey, please. Wow, great. Um, you guys grab you grab your stuff, and you head... Nell leads you up the staircase and into... It looks like these are just, like, rooms where people can sleep. Um, so they lead you into one of the uh, rooms, and they uh, kind of hold the door open and gesture for you to walk in. I would like to walk in last. I walk in first. Great. I walk in and assess the exits. Okay. Um, so, Finn, you step into the room. Um, there is already somebody else in here. Um, you oh, see that sorry, there's... sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm with, I'm with Nell. We're here to talk to you. Um, the person who's speaking to you, you see a dwarven woman. Um, she is, you know, so short because she's a dwarf. Um, she has, she's got, she's like rocking an undercut. She's got like long hair and then it's like shaved on one side of her head. Reagan's um, instantly turned on. <laughs> <laughs> Mom? <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> Um, she's wearing, like, um, what was it? What I can only describe as vaguely steampunk outfit. Um, you see that she's got, uh, that there's some, like, diagrams and these kind of, like, metal devices, um, spread out on a table. Um, and you see that there's also a, the next thing you clock as soon as you step into the room, Finn, is that there is a metal dog, sitting at attention in the corner, this kind of robotic oh. dog that Scooby? kind of is very clearly, like, keeping an eye on everything around, um, these very watchful eyes. 
I pet it. Uh-oh. You kind of go over to pet it, and it kind of lets out this deep metallic growl. And the woman goes, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, you can pet it. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> you do. Um, And the dog kind of, um, it like wags its little metal tail. Aww. And there's like a soft creaking sound as it wags. Aww. Nice. What? What? kind of dog does it look like uh it looks like it's maybe like a bulldog (laughs) smushy boy nurgle i'd like to introduce you to nell my beach volleyball captain (laughs) nell goes oh yeah the seagull's new uh hi nurgle actually Um, he's apparently very very old (laughs) 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 the woman goes yeah, I can tell by the uh, by the way that it talks. Uh, sounds like a like an ancient bird. <laughs> Nell Nell shuts the door behind all of you, and the woman looks at them and she's like, "All right, so these are these are the ones, and we're pretty sure there's no like illusions or anything shifty going on here." And Nell goes, "As far as I know, but um, if you think something different," and the woman goes, "No, it's um." I think it's good. Uh, Rosie hasn't been, uh, you know, barking or anything like that, so I think we're okay. And she holds out her hand to Finn because he entered first. Um, she holds out her hand to Finn and she says, "I'm uh, Shiloh Pride Winter. You're uh, what's your name?" I'm Finn. Finn Fisher. Nice to meet you. Finn Fisher. Nice to meet you. This is Nurgle. Yes, I've I've been introduced to your goal already. Shiloh, um, what? Shiloh Pride Winter. Pride is, that, Winter. is that Shiloh as in? Virginia? Sure. <laughs> like the dog? Like the dog. Yeah. How I figured. yeah. We, can, we can cut this all out in post. <laughs> um. This is now of the book Shiloh fan cast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never read the book Shiloh. Oh, I was thinking of Shenandoah. Envy. Yeah, yeah, I was like, totally Virginia? <laughs> it has the same noises. Zendaya? <laughs> <laughs> um, nice... Well, I shouldn't say nice to meet you, considering your friend stole something from us, but Malachi Kassir. Oh, right. I hold out Malachi a hand Kassir. shake. I'm pleased to meet you, Malachi Kassir. Uh She shakes your hand, and then she holds out a hand to you again. I forget what I said. My name was Danelle. Did I say Heartmark? Heartmark. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We uh, say Heartmark all the time. Die. Da- this is Reagan <laughs> Starkweather. <next. laughs> this was Reagan's active internal monologue during that time. Was shit. What did I say? My name was Reagan. Does not say anything and just does a little nod because he's cool. All right, pleased to meet you, Reagan. Um, right then. Uh, so the three of you came in. How how precisely did you come into possession of this cube? A fish helped me carry it. <laughs> This is technically There's a really true. a lot to unpack there. Just a lot to unpack. Um, Nell goes, hold on a second, Shy, hold up. Uh, Nell's Australian. Did... <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. I did steal from them, so we might want to explain a little bit. I just feel like it would be polite for us to maybe uh, kind of explain our deal before we start demanding information. About our item that you stole from us, yes. Exactly. Wow, Nell, you talking sense for once. I- I've had sense the whole time. I, we did win at volleyball. All right? <laughs> Thank you. Under my leadership, I might add. Um, Finn salutes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad to see you. Uh, top I gun? shove his hand down. <laughs> Um, Shiloh kind of grudgingly backs off and Nell says, again, I must apologize profusely for stealing your cube, um, but I knew it was a powerful, pretty dangerous artifact, and I knew that the Maelstrom cult was, was after it and was after you guys or was after that wizard. I, I, I'm not entirely sure what was going on there still, and if you have any more information, I'd love to hear it, um, but I couldn't risk them getting it. And I, I, yeah, and I was by myself, and it was a little bit of an extreme scenario, but I do, I do apologize. I don't like to steal things from good people. Um, mm. All right. You seem to know a lot about things and people and maelstrom cults, so uh, what exactly is your deal? Who are you? Who are you working for, huh? 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you all of Reagan, that, actually. That's Nell. They were our beach volleyball captain. Before that, actually... How did you know that we had it? Right. So, I'll just say. So, 
where should I start here? So um, Shiloh and I are part of an organization um, known as, we're called the, well, all right. So the name isn't super descriptive of what we are anymore, but it's sort of one of those convoluted things where it started out as one. We're called the Archaeological Artificers Association. Um, the, you know, the AAA for short. Uh, I had an uncle who was a tow truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Malachi, you've probably worked with them, right? Yeah, for like car AAA, yes. claims? I actually have run into that a few times in my travels. You you might have, although we generally try to keep on the down low. Um, I'm a huge fan of your batteries. Thank you. Uh, Shiva goes, thanks, me and a couple of the other uh, arcane technologists worked on those ourselves. And Nell goes, anyway, so we... Um, our our whole deal is generally trying to make sure that the that the people who come to this ocean to you know seek treasures and to just kind of generally like go into islands and take everything that looks interesting that's not nailed down don't accidentally awaken some ancient terrible evil or like steal the sacred relic of people who very much care about it and don't want it to be stolen just because it's shiny or who you know just generally we try to be a force for common sense in the world don't take important things okay i mean let's not paint all ancient terrible evils with the same brush here <laughs> Well, okay. Yeah, that too. Let's um, not pay everybody who takes shiny objects with the same brush either. I, for sure. We're not trying to paint anyone with the same brush here, but uh, <laughs> we are trying to make sure that those who um, maybe don't have intentions that are good beyond just greed or extreme curiosity or other sorts of things that bring people to the Lunluma Ocean from getting in over their heads. So we just like to keep an eye on things. And lately... What we've been keeping an eye on are these cubes that have been popping up. Uh, and we don't really know where they're coming there from. There are more. There's, so, yeah, I said cubes, plural. Um, the one you guys found is just one of them. <gasps> yeah, I wasn't sure if you caught that because there wasn't like a big gasp, but I'll pause now in case you want to gasp. <laughs> Nerd, Nurgle, gasp. <laughs> Wait, so, so this isn't the first one you've seen then? No. Uh, well, it's the first that I personally have gotten my hands on, um, but a few other people in our organization have, have gotten a couple others. Um, they're very powerful. They're very mysterious. Um, they're really, their their energy signature is unique. Uh, they kind of look helplessly over at Shiloh, and Shiloh goes, yeah, it's, it's extra plana for sure. This isn't something that comes from the material plane. It's a really kind of... Um, Something, something else. Uh, Malachi looks intently at them for a second and then sort of leans in and says, do you know where the other ones came from? We don't. That's one of the things we're trying to figure out. Um, because he stops himself. Finish what you were saying. Um, finish what I was saying. Right. Okay. So these things are super powerful. Um, they're popping up all over the ocean. We don't know why. Um, but every time one pops up, it's kind of like a race to see who's going to get to it first. Um, race between? Race between a whole bunch of people. So us, the Maelstrom cult was going after one for some reason. Um, there are some independent forces, a couple of pirate fleets that seem to be going after these things because they, they emit a pretty strong magical signal and anyone who's got any way of tracking that picks it up. Um, so we're trying to get them so that we can figure out what they are and what they do before anybody else does. Um, well, that is all very interesting, and I'm happy to hear it. Glad you're on top of things. Anyways, I'm going to need it back now. Well, okay, so so uh, that's the background. So we got the signal from one of these popping up, um, and we weren't able to get to it before the wizard got it out of the Abolith lair and uh, got attacked by the Maelstrom cult, and then... It ended up somehow uh, near the Bluefin Tropical Resort, and I was the only agent who could get there kind of quickly enough. So I landed and started trying to figure out where it was because it, we can get we can figure out the general area where it is, but it's hard to get into a precise read on location. So I'm out there at the resort, and I'm like, okay, well, I might as well just act like I'm at a resort. So I 
you know, captain the beach volleyball team and make friends with a couple of elves and just generally I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and then I hear a commotion and a, you know, someone breaking the orbs that protect the the weather sphere. And I remember that the Maelstrom cult was supposedly after it. And then I run into Finn in the woods and I get the idea that you guys are maybe more, uh, maybe more than just people who are weirdly good at beach volleyball. <laughs> and so while the three of you were out stumbling around the forest, I real quick, uh, searched your room and didn't find it immediately, but found, uh, you know, that you had a locked chest that I didn't have time to break into. What a shame. Um, and then when I did have time to break into it, I did, and I found the cube, and I left. Thank you for leaving my jar of dirt, by the way. I do appreciate that. Yeah, it seemed like it was maybe of sentimental value. Like I said, we really try not to just take things from people. Yeah, it's also the key to defeating Davy Jones. Yeah. The, uh, see, this is why we need people like us around. Is that way you don't accidentally take an artifact that's the key to defeating Davy Jones. What do you have against the monkeys? They're later stuff. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you Have you seen the Frotus Room episode? So you so you did know that it came from an Aberlus lair. I was not sure of that. Yeah, cuz that was where we picked up its signal originally and then it um I see. Ended up elsewhere. Um, but not all of these cubes have been places... I mean, one of them just, like, appeared in the middle of a city. Did it... something happen, or did it just appear? Yeah, well, that's one of the ones that we got. That was one of the first ones mm. that we got our hands on. Shiloh goes, it was close to, uh, close to my hometown, so I managed... Me and a couple, uh, couple of my buddies who were close by managed to get to it and uh, secure it, but... Where was that? Erebrer. I look at Reagan. <laughs> Well, um, how long has this been going on? Uh, it's been going on, um, oh gracious. Shiloh kind of thinks about it and she goes, well, so as near as we can tell from the records and kind of what we've compared, the first one popped up a couple years ago. Um, there were only a couple at that point, And then right about, mm, right about a month ago, there started being a bunch more. Hmm. Well, that's great. Happy to hear it. Uh, so they're picking up in frequency then? They picked up in- Was there a special occasion? No, not, I mean, not really. Not that we knew of. They're just all of a sudden, there were a whole bunch of, a, a whole bunch of them on the, on the arcane map as it were. Well, how many years ago? So no, so about a month ago was when a bunch of them popped right, up, but right. there've been records of people finding a few of them Oh, gosh, three years ago? Four? Something like that? Uh, Malachi looks uncomfortable at that. Um, well, if they keep on popping up, then I'm sure it won't be an issue if we just take this one. Thank you. And good night. It's been really nice getting in there. Um, You're a great dog. I'm, I'm just going to take this and leave. Take... The, the cube is not in the room, as far as you can see. I say, well, I'm... Where is it then? Because uh, I want it back. Thank you. I check under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> you, you drop and look under the bed. No sign of the cube. Just some dust. I um, drag Fig back that? out by his ankles. <laughs> I don't stay under there. It's only like a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so where is it? Because uh, finders keepers or whatever. We found it. There's more. So you can study those ones. But I would like... This one particularly back, if you would not mind. Thank you. Well, I mean, Reagan, by the rules of finders keepers, they did find it in our locked safe. <laughs> in no, our that's, locked damn. safe. That's true. Shiloh looks at you, Reagan, and Shiloh says, Are you from Erebra? I can hear your accent. Yeah. Ah, what's your family name? Um, <laughs> Reagan chokes on a dust bunny that Finn has kicked up. Uh, <laughs> Starkweather? Is it? Is it? Your name's Starkweather, right? Did you lie to us? Yeah, Starkweather. I thought it was Heartmark. Yeah. Starkweather. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I know your family. Uh, I'm gonna. Malachi looks. All right. Well, a little... you know what? We don't need to talk about <laughs> Intrigued. that. Intrigued. No, it's fine. I wasn't gonna push it. Yeah. Uh. Why do you want the cube? I just need it. I just need it. I just I want to have it for uh, a uh -huh. paperweight to weigh down my papers. Reagan, you hate magic. Yeah. Go ahead and roll deception. 
Hannah looks smug. That's a 17. Well, I rolled a natural one on her side. So Shiloh kind of goes, yeah, all right. I don't care why you want it. You can't have it, unfortunately, because we... What does AAA do with these cubes? Nell says, so far we've just been taking them back to uh, HQ and... um, Which is where? It's an island. Is it near... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> the looks they're giving each other right now won't translate to an audio medium. Um, Nell kind of raises their eyebrows a little bit and says, um, it's near, it's in the Northern Sea, kind of, it's it's not owned by any kingdom. It's like a private, Is it private in quotes. It's a, an uninhabited, also in quotes, island. Um so far, we've just been bringing them back there where they're safe. How long have you been there? Your headquarters. I've been there. No, how oh long gosh. have the headquarters been there? How long have the headquarters been there? I think it's been about 15 years, something like that. 10, 15 and years. And it's, it's safe? The cubes have been safe there? They've been safe there. No one's tried to like attack us yet or anything. But honestly, with the way things are going, it's possible that we might decide. See, this is where... um. <clears throat> I actually, Nell and Shiloh exchange a glance, and Nell goes, we actually um, wanted to ask for your help, in a way. Um, These things are popping up so quickly, and none of us, we don't have enough people in our organization to get to all of them. We were going to offer you a job, basically. If you want to go find... A job? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, that's... You were, you were inquiring about working for the, the Blue Fin, I pull out right? a copy of my resume. Yeah. No, that's great, actually. I would very much It just like... says, killed an ooze. <laughs> that's... Honestly, those are exactly the kind of skills we like to see. Oh, we also killed those cultists. I don't know if you knew that. I don't know if you already gone by that time. No, I didn't. I was already gone by that time. That's uh, exactly. Yeah, we those did. Are also... We did kill the Maelstrom cult, or at least those of them that were there. See, uh, Nell looks at Shiloh and is like, "I told you, they really. I think that they could be a great asset." And Shiloh goes, "Yeah, well, I don't know if I trust them at this point. If they're just trying to get the cubes for themselves, how do we know they won't just take them and run?" And Nell goes, well, I mean, you got to take a chance on people at some point. Um, And Nell looks back at you guys and says, anyway, we could tell you where some of these have popped up. And if you get one and give it to AAA, we'll pay you or, you know, help you get. I don't really know what you're like after in your personal lives. (laughs) but I guess fulfillment. We've got a lot of connections is what I'm saying. I mean... Do you have a freezer? What? A freezer? Well, we had dinner, but I haven't had dessert yet. Oh my God. You guys had any ice cream? Finn, you've had I three don't... ice cream cones today. That's enough. I'm hungry. Now, those, if you will get that cube before someone nefarious gets it, I will give you as much ice cream as, like, I can provide. I high-five Nurgle. A lifetime supply. Nurgle... <laughs> raises his little talon, uh, his foot. I don't do seagulls have talons. Yeah, no. I mean, all I guess they do. must. They eat fish and stuff. He yeah. raises his little talon and high fives you with it. It hurts a little because it's sharp. <laughs> um, I, I just, what assurance do we have that handing them over to you, as opposed to anyone else, is for the greater good? That is. A good question. What? What assurance do we have? Uh, I, I rub against my rock in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, go ahead and make a, just make a like a straight up charisma check for me. Charisma. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a sixteen. Sixteen, and then go ahead and make an insight check with advantage. Okay. Ooh. Okay. It's gonna be an eighteen plus three, so twenty one. For insight. 21? Yeah. I don't know how much Malachi is going to trust his instincts or his gut, Uh but your gut is telling you, Malachi, even as you ask and as you kind of put your hand in your pocket where the rock is, and as you sort of ask, like, how do we know that we can trust you more than anyone else? You get a sort of a, a feeling of calm and of kind of 
trustworthiness, you pick up on a little bit of desperation in Nell's voice and a little bit of kind of like sharp determination in Shiloh. And you just sort of feel like, okay, they're not straight up evil. Mm -hmm. You're still not 100% like, oh, these guys are like, you know, holy warriors or anything right. like that. But you, you sort of, even as you're asking the question, you're like, eh, maybe I just could just trust someone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Word. I, I let this simmer for a second. All right, wait, no. So hold on. So yeah, you're saying you would want us to join. I keep on thinking you're going to say Triple H every time you say this. <laughs> uh, you wanted us... The Archaeological Artifices Association, yeah, if you could have to say it. That. Like, you yeah. want us to join that to go hunting for boxes and get them... You just kind of want us to, you know, like some sort of adventuring historians or something. Yeah. Uh, but you're telling me that you don't have the cube that you stole from us. Well... I do have the cube that Nell stole from you, but what am I just going to... Why would I give it to you right now? Because I want it, and also because you said there's more. So if you've got more, we can just borrow this one for a hot minute, and you can go reclaim it later. But we just... I gotta go see a man about a dog, and the cube is the dog. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You've already had someone else ask you about the cube? Perhaps. Miss Pridewinter, I think the question Reagan's trying to ask is how much will we be paid? Uh. Is it more or less than 125 gold? <laughs> no. Don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Nell goes, well, I don't, we don't have clearance to offer just like, I don't want to offer you guys like a flat rate because like per, like we could pay you per cube, but like then what if like getting one cube is super dangerous and getting another cube, you just kind of walk in and grab it and walk out with it, you know, mm -hmm. like it feels like it, there should be some sort of metric for danger. And Shiloh goes, that's so overcomplicated. I really feel like we could just pay them per cube. Um, <laughs> Nell says, why don't we, um, we'll give you, let's see, there's three of you. So, maybe, uh... Don't forget Nurgle. The bird doesn't get any money. Go on. I know, yeah, I'm with Malachi. I don't think the bird really needs money. And Nurgle goes, ah, ah, and shakes his head. It's true. I admire his non-materialism. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nell goes, why don't we say, if you get a cube, and it's, like, pretty easy, it just takes you, like, a couple days, you bring it back to us, you don't die in the process. 150 gold. And if you, uh, if it's the sort of thing where, like, one of you gets killed, there could be higher compensation for that. I don't, I don't expect you to get killed, they quickly clarify. I feel like um, that's sort of a troubling incentive that you're setting I, up. Again, really, I don't want to, like, imply anything. And Shiloh goes, no, they're trying to be straight with you and they should be straight with you. This is, uh, this shit's pretty dangerous. We've had some good people go missing over the past uh, past couple years in our line of work. People people aren't always happy with you when you show up and you're like, hey, you shouldn't take that gold. It belongs to someone. Sometimes you get stabbed. Ooh. So um okay. Malachi <laughs> um Malachi is feeling like maybe he wants to join up. <laughs> oh yeah, Finn is Finn is in. But but I do look pointedly at Reagan when they offer 150 for the easy jobs. Uh, Regan, does that does that include payment for the one that Nell stole? Yeah, I was going to say, can I get 150 right now for delivering it safely into your hands? Uh, make a persuasion check. And I'll say you can make it with advantage because Finn brought it up. <laughs> that was an 8 and a 9, so hang on. Um, 12. Nell kind of goes, well, I, I don't have 150 gold on me at the moment and Shiloh cuts them off and is like that was your like your interview let's say you know how sometimes when you're applying for a job they like make you do a test and you have to show that you can do mm -hmm. uh Except produce a piece of writing or whatever it, but... and then they let you have it yeah that I don't know the last job I applied for oh actually did super involve that never mind yeah question do you have somebody who's running tests on these cubes you collect I assume Shiloh nods and she's like there's a, a group of people who are 
you know, we're, I, like I said, the name doesn't 100% suit what we do always, but the word artificer is in there for a reason. We've got people who sort of specialize in magical items and the analysis of magical items. These cubes prove tricky because they've got a sort of anti-magic quality about them, although no, no two have exactly the same behavior. And they're like different sizes. They're all cubes, but different sizes, different colors. The one that Nell got from you guys has a like a what looks like a keyhole in it. Not all of right. them have that. Is it the same people looking at them every time? It's the same. We're seeing the same people pop up over and over again, but it's it's not always people you'd expect, right? I mean, examining the cubes. Oh, examining the cubes. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. But there's a group of us. It's there's there's a group. Of I us. just wonder if you know if you're having trouble figuring things out with looking at all these cube, different cubes in the same group of people if it might be worth getting some fresh sets fresh of eyes on the situation yeah perhaps are you do any of you I have mean, any expertise with these sorts of matters i don't but as somebody mentioned already we have discussed the cube with someone else who's quite interested in taking a look i'll be honest i'm not sure i trust the guy to not just be after this out of pure greedy We'll call it curiosity to be nice, but he does seem like he knows his stuff. Someone here on the island? Yeah, here in Benswith, actually. All right, well, give me their name and I'll, uh, I'll look into it. I only have one name. It's Solaris. Solaris. I'm going to see if Shiloh knows anything. Damn, <laughs> I can't remember shit. Um, Shiloh's like, all right, I think I've heard the name, but I'm not from Benswith. I just got here yesterday. Um, He's got a place across from the... The uh, Crimson Call. Right. Maybe before we leave, I'll stop by, talk to him, see what he thinks. But again, we're, we're trying to be pretty careful with these yeah. cubes. Like, like I said, I don't know that I trust the guy, but... Yeah. Something in that last conversation Malachi had with him did warm him up to Solaris a little bit. Yeah. Um. So, do you guys want to know where you can... Nell and I are going to head back to headquarters with the one we've got, Um. but... Nell will be your sort of primary contact, um, and I as well. We usually work as a pair, and we can uh, we can offer advice and such as you need it. And then once you've got it, we can meet you somewhere and get it from you. How how would we? If you're interested, how would we contact you if we were to do this? Uh, Shiloh pulls out. You see, she takes out this little piece of like folded cloth, um, and she kind of unfolds it, and she goes. This is like a two-way communicator type of thing. It lets you talk to us. Um, I've got one of them. I smell it. <laughs> you smell it? Um, it smells like, it smells kind of bronzy and like uh, like metal. Um, and then you see Shiloh kind of reaches over to where her dog is and like grabs it. There's like a, like a cloth bandana around the dog's neck um, and kind of <laughs> unties it and holds it up and is like, this is the other one, so you can sort of talk both ways in the middle. You can kind of get like a, it's pretty unclear because it's cloth. You but just you can speak to it? You don't write on it or anything? Um, no, you just sort of speak to it. And there can be issues with the signal sometimes if you're too far away or if you're in a place that has a lot of weird magic shit going on. Um, yeah, if there's a bad signal, you can't talk. If there's a bad signal, you can't talk, exactly. But but usually, and even if you, like, so you can talk if it's really kind of a good signal, and then sometimes you can write on it if you're if you're in a place where there's a bad signal and you can still get messages across that way. Mm. It's still experimental, all right? Okay, okay. It's, I'm good. Uh, I'm working on it. Malachi it, looks longingly at the dog like he really wants to pet it, but doesn't think he should. Do, do you want to pet her? What? Me? No. Do, you, no. do you want to pet her? Really? No. She's really friendly. Um, I, I recommend I, it. I'm saying no, and I'm just sort of like doing that thing where you like hold out your hand to a dog that you know you're not supposed to approach, but you want it to come up to you anyways. The dog is very much like on guard duty, but Shiloh kind of clocks this and like nods her head a little bit, <laughs> and the dog sort of deviates from its guard duty for a moment to come over and rub against your hand, and then goes back and sits in the corner again. Malachi makes a hand into a fist and puts it in his pocket. <laughs> uh, how many bong is it? <laughs> it is. Uh, I'm. You guys have been talking for a little bit, and it was already past seven thirty. So I'll say it's getting close to fighting pit time. Mm. Eight bong for sure. 
8.30 bong, one might say? Probably, okay. yes. They don't do half bongs, but like in terms of the <laughs> amount of time it's been since 8 bong. Malachi has never done a full bong in his life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, well, so Reagan's definitely getting antsy. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So Malachi's feeling a hundred percent in, but he's not gonna say it. If you guys need to discuss it, Finn is gonna say it. I'm a feeling a hundred percent in. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. Uh, if you guys need to talk about it amongst yourselves, be our guests. You can. I mean, you can step out, or you'll be here, and we'll stay in here. We're not gonna leave you alone in the room. But <laughs> all right, that's that's all. Gr- so let me just get these all straight, though, right? So you're saying that you don't have a cube on you that I can take. Correct. But <laughs> hypothetically, you would give me 150 gold if I got you more cubes. Yeah. Well, I'd give the three of you 150 gold, so I'd give you 50 gold. But, like, if you got me three cubes, then you'd have 100 Reagan, gold. you would get 30 of that gold as your allowance. The rest I'd hang on to until you become fiscally responsible. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. This- China goes way a dynamic going on here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the half of it. I slap Finn. All right, I know where I stand on this. Uh, I gotta go. And Reagan just turns and leaves. <laughs> he has a prior engagement. He did not say where he stands on this before he turned and went. Okay, but... so... Well, now he's standing in the hallway. <laughs> Finn and I, I think, would be interested in doing this. Reagan's gonna sleep on it, but we'll we'll find you tomorrow. Okay, yeah, no, that's awesome. That's great to hear. Um, If you guys need to take the night, we'll be here tomorrow morning. We're not going to be here that long, but we'll be here tomorrow morning if you want to. We can talk then and decide where you should go first, if you, if you want to go somewhere. Yes. Um. Cool. Well. Keep it fresh. Pleasure to meet you. We will. Shiloh goes, Shiloh goes, yeah, tell, tell Starkweather that I I think it would be a pleasure to work with him. I will. Right before we leave, I, uh. I kind of, I want to lean into Nell and, um, so does this, this alliance, Triple I, do you, do you guys, is there like a company-wide volleyball tournament? <laughs> <laughs> Nell goes, you know, there hasn't been, but absolutely, I think that's a thing we should set up. I'm going to get on that right away. I think that would really, be like a very, like, you know, good for the mental and physical health of your employees. Yeah. And in this ha- morale builder. In these harrowing times, really, I think that we could team all Team building the- exercises. Yeah. I- I'm a big, team building exercises. big fan of beach volleyball. So You know, me too. Lots of beaches in this ocean. So just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the it idea. See, this is why I knew it me. was great to bring you guys. It would board. certainly entice me to join. Um, and I leave. <laughs> great. Uh, wait. So was that exchange out loud or whispered? I mean, it was out loud, but I was talking just to Nell, not to Shiloh. I was like leaning into Nell. All right. So I walk over to Nell, and I'm like, "Hey, Nell. Yeah. Is there like a company wide volleyball <laughs> tournament? <laughs> or... You know." Funnily enough, Malachi literally just said that, and now, you know, it's one of those things where they say you hear an idea from one person, and then all of a sudden you're, like, yeah. seeing that same word everywhere. It's like that. All right, cool. Finn and I Not walk out the door, in. and Reagan instantly asks, hey, I wonder if there's going to be a volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as I'm going into this, I'm I, just, I just started thinking about volleyball. Ever had anything about volleyball? Um... And you guys leave the interesting weasel and head for the pit. The fighting pit. All right. Let's watch our friend get beat up. That was a disgusting way that I just said that. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So you guys head to the fighting pit. On my way there, Um, I want to run into the embassy and see if there's any new art on the wall. (laughs) The embassy is unfortunately closed at this hour. Uh Aw. But you can, you like press your face up to the window and it's the same art that was there earlier today. Aw, man. Um... Malachi uh, is like on on our way over. I'm like asking uh-huh. Finn, like, or not Finn. What the hell am I talking about? Finn's not fighting. Finn's a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking Reagan, are you sure you want to do this? I don't know if this is a great idea. Do you feel like you could actually win your gold back, or is this going to be a foolish venture yet again? Uh, I just kind of look at Malachi. I'm like, what are you so worried about? Uh, it's just. It's just a bit of a... Never know who's going to be in a fighting pit in Bensworth. That's what I've always said. (laughs) I've done it before. I've done it before. Does that make you feel any better? I I take a moment at that. 
And I I look you up and down. No. Oh, well. <laughs> Jesus. I just keep walking. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys get to the fighting pit. There are dozens of people Oh, here. boy. Um, I am suddenly just... entirely aware of how many weapons I'm wearing on my person right now. You are not alone in wearing that many weapons on your person. There are many people here who are packing heat, as it were. I don't want to look like I fit in, is the problem. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. You look you like do. a scumbag, um, male. And you even more fit in, uh, even your your kind of rock-covered self uh, absolutely does not stand out here. We've got tabaxi, there's lizard folk, goblins, orcs, just absolutely everybody that you can think of uh, seems to be here. Um, you even see other Ganassi. Oh, there are um, Ganassi yeah, here? Yeah, you see someone kind of on the other side of the Are there any the other Earth Ganassi? That is just like straight up fire for hair, <gasps> just kind of yelling like, oh. ah! <laughs> of course. And yeah, you, you guys um, walk into the fighting pit. You get there like just uh, just about like 10 minutes before uh, Nine Bong, um, which is perfect in terms of, of when you'd want to, to be there. And you see the half orc woman who checked you in, Reagan, is standing uh, with a like clipboard. Um, and she kind of points at you right as you walk in and she goes, uh, there's the hot mock. Come on over here. Come on over here. Um, and she waves you over and uh, kind of checks you in. I do a nice salute, like sarcastically at Reagan and Mal and kind of back out. Yeah. <laughs> at who? <laughs> I'm astral projecting, first and foremost, <laughs> um, at Finn and Mal. There you go. And uh, as, as Reagan's running away, I shoo him back and I take all of his valuables off of him so he doesn't lose them in the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. I take all of his extra things. How old are you? I already said I'm 26, okay? <laughs> the the half work kind of points at all three of you and she's like, anyone placing any bets? Hmm. Come on. I want to put five silver on Reagan. I put okay. one silver on Reagan. Sure. Appreciate the show of support, boys. I've never gambled before. Seems legit. Um, and it looks like they're just finishing up the last fight. Um, there was, like, a, a woman with, like, a shaved... It looks like the, the fight before this was one of the, like, bare-knuckle ones. So there's a woman with, like, a shaved head who's kind of emerging victorious here, um, while a, a man is kind of all kind of bloody. You see a couple of clerics kind of helping him off. Looks like most of the clerics here, as you're sort of sizing them up, are clerics of, like, the god of war and the <laughs> god of glory. Yeah. Which, you know, as you'd expect. Um, Is there a cleric handing out ice cream cones, like in the temple? <laughs> no, but there are people handing out, um, like, cotton candy and, like, peanuts and stuff like that. How much is uh, a cotton candy? Kind of Nurgle. Carnival food. Fetch. Uh, ah! Nurgle uh, swoops over I say, Finn, you probably shouldn't candy. steal in here. I'm going to say the people here are nasty enough that someone's just going to take a swipe at oh. Nurgle. Um, Nurgle, I take it back. Come back. Andy, do you have Nurgle's armor class on there? Ah! Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hold on, I do. Oh my god. I swear to god I rolled a natural one just oh, now. Oh, thank god. Ah. Um, so, Nurgle is, Nurgle is too fast, and the, he just swipes out of the way of this very drunk man who was trying to take a swing at him, and he brings back, like, he just, like, ripped off a bunch of cotton candy, and he, like, lands on your shoulder, and he holds it out to you. I eat it out of his mouth, like a bird I say, Finn, <laughs> Finn, if you wanted cotton candy, you just ask, okay? It just tastes better this way. <laughs> um, Hannah, side note, have I- we've healed from the radiant damage from earlier, right? I'll say, yeah, you had time to take a short rest, cool. so you can use a hit dice or a couple of hit dice to get rid of the radiant damage from earlier. Alright, I'm up to twenty-one, so that's probably fine. Um, yeah, cool. So Reagan, uh, you approach. Um, someone from the from the fighting pit kind of takes you aside and explains the rules to you. They're like, Yeah, all right, well, you're in a no holds barred fight, so you know, magic, weapons, fighting dirty, whatever, really anything goes here. Um, the only rules are if somebody surrenders, you have to back off right away, don't attack them again. Um, you're also not allowed to keep attacking your opponent once they are unconscious um and no one from outside the fight is allowed to interfere um and you know if you want to surrender you just raise your hand and say you surrender and the fight will stop right then and you'll get 
Well, you'll get nothing if you surrender. But if you win, you get 30 gold. So hold on. Uh, any questions? Let's do it. Um, so this isn't a question to this person, but when this person steps away, I confirm really quickly with Reagan and Finn that yesterday when the half-orc woman was telling us the rules, she said there was no magical interference, or no interfering during the fight, correct? Uh-huh. Okay. I then cast Divine Favor oh, on Reagan. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You are totally allowed to do that. Um, you go ahead and you cast Divine Favor. I don't know what that does. Do I know that you just did that? Um, No. <laughs> Uh, is it a touch spell? It doesn't say I have to touch anyone. What's the what's the? Oh, range? hold on. It says self NVM. Ah, uh, tragic. Wait, hold on. I might have something else. I do want to help him because I don't trust this guy <laughs> to be. I pat Reagan on the back with my mage hand. I don't fully trust Reagan to be self confident right now. Do um, you just want to go sit down or something? I it, I swear to God, it's like you think I'm gonna die. It, it, it seems like you kind of have a death wish. Is the problem? It's just a semi legal. Okay, I will. Thing. I can. I can bless Reagan though, okay? Yes, you can bless Reagan. Uh, as soon as his back is turned, I, I go, please God help this man. <laughs> um. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say, um, go ahead and make a, uh, go ahead and make a, I'll let you make stealth or sleight of hand check and I'll let you make it with advantage because you specifically are waiting till he turns away okay. and it's a crowded cool. room. Well, I have a minus one for both, so 12. 12. Uh, what's your passive perception, Reagan? 10. 10? <laughs> so you feel, Reagan, you feel good, but you have no idea where it's coming from. <laughs> you're just sort of like, as you're looking around and people are cheering and the atmosphere, you feel you feel good, you feel invigorated. Hell yeah! Reagan, what this means for you is for the first minute of the fight, can I just say that I do this right before the fight starts? Yeah. Okay. For the first minute of the fight, you have you can add an extra d4 to your attack roll and, or your saving throw. Literally, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Reagan, you sort of jump over the edge of the fighting ring and land. Shirt's off. In the dirt, Shirt is uh, off. Of this pit. Shirt is off. I see his um, scaly little skin on his back, and I note it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. They're, they're pronounced enough. Not everybody's going to notice them, but especially you guys who've seen Reagan with his shirt off before, you, you notice that it's different. They're sparkly. Um, yeah. <laughs> you land, and there's a big kind of roar from the crowd, and someone who's acting as the announcer cups their hands up to the mouth and goes, Entering the ring is the challenger, Hartmark! Totally milks it. Totally milks it. <laughs> Flexing. <laughs> I make my mage hand into like a foam finger with the number one. Make me a make me a performance check, Reagan. Yeah, thirteen. I'm rolling shit. Thirteen. Listen, get the bad rolls out now. Um, you still you're you're a charismatic and hot enough guy that it's not you're not making a fool of yourself or anything. You just kind of it's uh, it comes across as slightly more grim than he wanted it to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Malachi is fully just standing there, stony face, arms crossed. Stony faced. <laughs> Stony <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> and you got you see that on the other side of the ring a figure is pushing their way through the crowd, and this figure jumps over the edge of the pit and lands in the dirt. They're wearing kind of like a, a cloak with the hood up. Ooh. Um and as you it's watch they sort of throw back they they unclip the cloak and throw back, revealing bare chest, a bear scaly chest and a dragonborn face oh. as this I fully thought you were going to say we were fighting like a bugbear. Bear chest, bear legs, bear paws. <laughs> well, I thought it was going to be Nergal. <laughs> no, bear. <laughs> Can you imagine if it was Nergal? Uh, no, as this, as this dragonborn warrior tosses back his head and kind of stares you down and the crowd goes, ah, oh, welcome Gersh, the knight of the north. And you see the dragonborn kind of tips his head back and opens his mouth, and there's just a little bit of cold, icy energy. Ooh. These kind of sparks of snowflakes, basically, that come out of his mouth. And then he rolls his neck around and looks you directly in the eyes. Reagan, go ahead and roll initiative. <laughs> it's gonna be really bad, guys. Uh oh. Nat 20, baby. Wow! Nat 20. You are going to go first, and that is where we will pick up next episode. <laughs> ah! Fighting pit time. I want to fight! <laughs> but Malachi <laughs> does not, so... 
All right. Well, that is the end of our episode. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you want more of our content and ourselves, you can find us on social media at Ship of Fools Cast on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. As always, we have a few people we need to thank. Uh, thank you to Lucas Mangold for doing our theme music for the show. Uh, you can find him for all of your music needs at lucascarlmusic at gmail.com. That's Carl with a K. Carl with a K. Carl with a K. Um, and thank you also to Theo Golden for our logo. You can find him at T Golden Art on Instagram. And... Yeah, uh, we're still doing, we have our special Q&A episode that is coming out a week from today, if you're listening to this on the day it came out, so. <laughs> Which I can only assume you are. Naturally you are. <laughs> that you've been waiting by your computer with bated breath for the past two weeks. Obviously. Not eating, not sleeping. Meaning <laughs> October 6th. Meaning October 6th. Thank you, Taylor. Um, <laughs> and then episode 8 will be out on October 13th. Uh, we haven't recorded our Q&A yet, so if you want to send in questions, you can do that on any of our social medias, which I mentioned previously. Thank you so much to the people who've already sent stuff in. We're very excited to answer your questions. And other than that, I think we are Or good. not answer your questions. Or not. Yeah, that's true. We <laughs> might not answer your question. <laughs> We're actually going to be playing it Jeopardy style, so all of your questions will be asked in the form of an answer. That would be really fun, actually. I don't think we can do that, but that would be fun. Hey, no, they've already submitted. What are you... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you all for listening. We will see you next week with a Q&A and the week after that with episode eight. Bye. Bye. Bye.